one nation on one soccer, which means it's Andy Petrillo and Jordan Wilson with you. Who would have thought with the amount of soccer we've got to get into, we're going to start the show off with some fashion. Wow. Soccer fashion. Okay. So there's still a, you know, a related item here as far as a soccer player wearing something that has set Twitter a buzz because it's questionable mm. fashion, my friend. At best. Questionable. Now, having said that, I decided to wear um, shoes that were the closest possible to what our boy Nicholas Joachini uh, had. Okay, so here's yeah, the slap him on the table. This is your table. You are assuming I have the flexibility I had when Un I was unlock younger. the hip. Just put unlock your foot it on the and table. Just slap it up. So there it is. Some, Whoa. Can you see these puppies? Oh, Look at that. So there you go. Six inch. Uh, I don't know. Now you're 5'7", for sure. Now, 5'9", <laughs> what are you talking about? So here's the thing. Our boy Nicholas Joachini from St. Louis rolled up to the stadium Bruh. wearing this outfit, which you're like, okay, fine. No, it's cool. Look at it. But you got to go down. Oh, I didn't even realize the stars on those pants. Are those like leather or pleather? Doesn't matter, okay? I'm okay with the outfit, Jordo. Are you? But then I go down to the shoes. I'm like... Astro Boy. No, don't do it. I'm sing not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. Sing the song that you sang off air. She I, said, Astro, Astro Boy. I, mean, I got it confused with the Macho Macho Man soundtrack. <laughs> it's not the Astro Boy soundtrack. But these are the thing. They're actually Astro Boy boots. Because if you go to Nicholas's page, he thanks Soul Cave for hooking him up with the Astro Boy boots. They are literally, we're not making fun of him saying, calling him Astro Boy. Those boots are literally Astro Boy boots. Would you wear those rolling up to a game? I couldn't. I could not wear them. You don't I, I could not pull those off. And for me, I, I like comfort. Th there's no way those are comfy. I, you I can't question dance the in comfort, them. Yeah. If something happened, right, and you just need to run, this is what I always think. If something happens and I need to take off 30 yards, I need to do a little dart, you can't do it in those. He's tripping. He's the first man down. He's the first one getting eaten by a bear. Or if something <laughs> happens, he is the one getting destroyed. Those are random bears on the streets random of Random bears. Louis. That, those things that could happen that might not happen. And he, he's not prepared. I'm just thinking if it's pregame and suddenly you find out that he's like a last minute scratch, it's because he toe punted the turf <laughs> and just went face down. Look, where were you unaware? I'm just saying I can't pull those off. No, no chance. Look at them. I mean, models have been wearing those types of boots for a while they've been they're actually called moon boots like moon boots have existed for quite some time i think women were first wearing them as the ski mm -hmm. après ski look so and i don't now, want i don't, I don't want to brag but the the few times well it's not really bragging but i just don't want to talk about it and certain times i was on the bench in denmark they had those moon boots oh yeah yeah so you take off your boots you kind of keep them close to your body because it's that cold sometimes and you wear the moon boots on the bench for like the first 45 to minutes to keep warm to keep warm so your feet are warm okay. and then it's like okay it's your time to get ready to, to warm up it usually happened in preseason because you usually play 45 minutes one half because there were no cameras team. to capture this man you have they weren't as big as those but there's still moon boots. So you, you throw those on, you keep your feet warm. But I don't think uh, there was a situation about being warm there. I think that's straight fashion and it's questionable. I want, to your point, I'd like to know how it feels to walk in them. I've mastered walking in the heel, the yeah. wedge, the platform, clearly. But I'd, I've never walked in a shoe that's almost a perfect circle. So I'd like, to, <laughs> I'd like to know what that feels like to walk in a shoe to the Astro Boy boot. How... Does that actually work? But shout out work. to you ladies with the heels, man. Every time I see it, I'm like, this is like a work of art. I could never. Like your foot, like I, the, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. History lesson, bro. I mean, we all know this. Got to know this. High heels were first invented by men to be worn by men because the high heel is what you wore to get into your horse. Put your little foot in the thingy. Do not ask me technical terms oh, cool. about horse riding. You got the saddle and, and <laughs> you stirrups. Look nervous. <laughs> Producer Kyle just saved my back end. He's like, they're called stirrups. That's right, stirrup. And that's why men wore the heels first. So you can click into your horsey, I'm giddy cool. up. No heels for me. I just, men I Men also do it. wore makeup. Men also wore wigs. Wow. Men, need, you need to know your own history here like a little it. bit. Uh, all right, let's get into a little Canadian Premier League chat here. And we have a new expansion side, which you always expect. You always get a pass, I feel, if you're an expansion team. Finish last, it's okay. That's what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. So when you come out of the gate flying, you are impressing people. You are already exceeding expectations. That, for me, seems to be the case for Vancouver FC. They are actually sitting third in the standings right now. One win, one draw, one loss. So they started the year off with a loss to Pacific. Everyone also figured 
Pacific is a strong team. Mind you, though, I think Pacific scored in the 80-something minute, right? So it was late in the game. Uh, then they beat York, which I guess you can make the argument, Dorito, you know, especially the way York started out. Yeah, but they tweaked things against York because sure. of the can champs. They, they did. They maybe did. were a bit robbed, but they tweaked things for the second game. And now they're coming off uh, a draw against yes. Halifax. So what's impressed you about this team so far? Well, the first thing that is, that's impressed me is that they've developed from the first game. When I'm looking at them play yesterday, uh, or sorry, Saturday against Halifax, they look different than how they look when they play Pacific. Pacific, they are almost nervous, a bit scared, just trying to find their feet, which is expected. That's their first game. But they're already starting to come into their own game three, which is game four of the year, but game three in the CPL. And I, I like the way they're playing. I like how they have Bitar and Gael Sandoval, and they have Hundle, they have Caden Chung had a big board performance on the weekend. He was all over the pitch. And some would question like him in the middle, how does that look? But he has an engine on him and obviously has a football intelligence. But he was sensational. I think what really impressed me about this team is the fact that already, Rocco Romeo, excuse me, how could I forget? He's, mm -hmm. he's been playing very well. It's just how quickly they've come together and they seem like a team. I feel like usually with a new franchise, it takes a bit of time, maybe like a third of the season to maybe get things going. But game three, game four, they, they look like a team. They look like they can at least tie or win games. I like that Sean Hundle went out and got another goal. So he has two goals on the season. And I only say that because sometimes we know what he said about kind of throwing some shade Vancouver Whitecaps way and Gressel threw it right back at him. And Oftentimes, when there's a war of words off the pitch, somebody can be affected by it because maybe it's not the attention you wanted. But I like the fact that he didn't care. He's like, I don't care that I stirred the pot. I don't care that I dropped the stink bomb. And we were talking about it on One Soccer Today. He still goes out and he's still doing him and he goes out and gets another goal. Yeah. I like that. It's his personality. You can see he, he doesn't care. He's yeah. like, he's all about yeah. his business. He feels that he should be playing at a higher level, but he's showing it so far. Like, he's, he's scoring goals, he's being active, he's had great movement. Um, but yeah, you know, we talk about this all the time, Trill. Strikers are judged by scoring goals. And if he can do it week in and week out and stay consistent, he'll be a big dog, a big player for this team. Small sample size, of course, even though you gotta give them credit, they're coming out of the gate looking good. But do you also think they've been tested? Do you think there will be, like, the real challenge? Again, Pacific was a real challenge, but I think many of us can look at York and Halifax and be like, well, not really a big challenge. I mean, Halifax is one of the three teams as well right now who have yet to win. Can you believe Cavalry's there? Ottawa's there? And Halifax, those three CPL teams have yet to register a W in the very early parts of the season. I get it. But I wonder if there will, the, there will be a coming down to earth moment for Vancouver. Do you see any kind of weaknesses? Has it been their opponent? Has there been something in their play? I think the weakness maybe um, just comes down to depth. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen probably their, their best starting 11 or 12, 13 players. But what does that look like inevitably if you have players that you either have to rest or they're Game injured? 18. Game 20. Yeah, and just like that lull. There's always that lull in the season where you're like maybe 15 games in and you're knocked up and you're beat up and guys are hitting you and you're like, well, I, I got to go and travel across the country and play this one game, but we're also playing four days later. Like, what does that look like with the squad? Um, but all the teams, you could say that. I think it's it's pretty even, and we can we can dive into that a bit later on the, on the podcast. But all across the board. So I'd say Vancouver, it's a good start, but it's just what do they look like if they get shot in the foot or if they get a big player injured? Like if Sean Hundle goes down, who's going to be a guy? Adversity. That, yeah. That's always the biggest question with any sports team. When you face adversity... How do you overcome that? Which is why I ask about an opponent also being that, you know, part of that conversation of adversity, right? What happens when they do go and face a team like Forge? What happens when they do face, I'm still going to put Cavalry in there, even though, like I said, they have yet to register a win. Yes. But, but even now, how about Valor? Valor is a very strong team. Valor is sitting in first. Like, what happens when they now start to go up against, you know, those types of teams, right? Well, well Valor's the thing, too. I, I look at their squad, and we'll get into it a bit later as well, but it's just about if they can stay fresh if yeah. they can stay healthy. And this is the thing with the CPL, is like, it's your, really your 22 that you can pull from. There's no U19s, there's no U17s, there's not a U23 team where you can watch some gems that are coming up and be like, oh, let's bring in two or three players. Like, this is all you have. So it's really about the freshness of your team and not having a period where you're to bare bones. You have to have your best players playing at all times. One question I do have for you before we wrap it up on Vancouver FC, because I think on the broadcast, 
was it you and KJ? And were, wheels, yeah. And were you questioning Ashton Goppy, so, you know, coach of Vancouver, were you questioning him bringing off Nathaniel St. Louis, young player, getting his first start? Uh, was it 35 minutes or 30 minutes in? 34, yeah, 35. Did you like that? I mean, I don't think you did. I, I felt, what bothered you about it? Well, I felt for the young man. Just being a player, that's, that's probably the second worst thing that could happen in terms of being substituted. The worst thing is when you get subbed on into a game and then you have to get subbed off. That hurts. Oof. That hurts. Not Thank injury related. Thankfully, it's never happened to me, but I've seen some of my homies, some of my teammates do it, and it's just one of those where, like, when they're coming off, you're, like, high-fiving them, like, it's okay, buddy. Like, you get subbed on, you play for 20 minutes or whatever, and you get subbed off. And you're that bad that the coach just takes you off? Or for tactical reasons, you have to take them off or whatever. But when it's, yeah, that one's bad. But starting a match, you're all psyched. You're like, I finally get a start. I'm going to play at least 55, 60 minutes. And then you get subbed off. You, you felt for um, Louis uh, on the weekend. But Wheels was saying, he's like, and, and to his point, he's correct. Instead of waiting the 10 minutes to make a sub at, at halftime, you got to do it right there. If you feel like this is a tactical change that would help the team get and into a did, better did position. It, it did. So yeah. he's right. Ashton got me, like, shout out to you, kudos to you, because it worked. And you could see the switch. Like, I, like you put a Nima on, and there was a midfielder that just gave a bit more depth, and there was more clarity in the roles of the team for Vancouver, but they were pushing on. It gave Batar as well freedom to go forward before he was a bit caught out just because of how the formation was. So it does work, but you just feel for a kid that is all hyped to start the first game, and then 35 minutes in, you're, you're sitting on the bench just... Yeah, whistling and, and swinging your legs. Substitutions, it's, in, it's interesting because to your point, we always make the assumption that if you go in, even if you get subbed off, you're either coming off at half, right, or maybe a little shortly after the second half starts. But what about those guys? And I know it's a tactical thing where even a coach will bring a guy in during injury time, right? So it's like the 88th minute and a guy's getting subbed in knowing he's going to play five minutes. I get it's tactics, right? Especially if you have the lead, you make a substitution, you slow the game down a little bit. I get all that, but I still, from a player perspective, you're like, Ugh. And then, even though you do your little dance on the side, your little warm-up to make sure you're ready to go, the last thing you want to do is go out there now and get injured. Mm. Like, I played five it's minutes true. and I just got injured, right? Or the last thing you want to do is be the guy who completely messes things up, you know, in the second minute of added time and suddenly the game which you were going to win is going to be a draw now. I don't like, there's so many things that could go through your head when you are a substitute. And this is what I said with Ashton Gottby um, when we were covering the game, is the difference between a good manager and a great one is pulling him aside, St. Louis, and telling him like... Conversation yeah, that happens Yeah, it was yeah. tactical. It wasn't so much about your performance. I want to see more out of you. Like ignite a spark in him. Don't tear him down because you need those bodies and you just also need to control the dressing room. If you have two, three, four players that are disgruntled and like, oh, this manager, I don't really like him, it just kind of bleeds and, and permeates within the group. So you want to try to keep... 22 players, not, not necessarily happy, but motivated, mm. willing to work and, and get to that goal. But it was, a, it was a courageous move, but it paid off. They got that point, and they looked dangerous at moments. That's a good point. I'd love to... Is anybody out there in Vancouver ask Afshin, what was the conversation like with Nathaniel afterwards? That's right? the real question. That's I the real know. question. Uh, the real, uh, another question is, is Ottawa ever going to win at home again? Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. So Atletico Ottawa coming off a 1-0 loss to York United. This is the team that won the regular season last year, made it to the final. A small sample size. People, I get it. Calamity, I know, I know, I know. But I, the, the standings are still the standings. So they're sitting in last. But here's the thing. Seven home games without a win stretching back to last season. What was happening? Well, what happened? What happened? <laughs> what, what's happening at home? I thought home cooking, your own pillow, your own blankie. Like, is that not supposed to be a benefit? The, the point I made on the weekend, I don't know if it's true. I'm just speculating. But I said that when you're away, you can kind of be a bit reserved and, and more disciplined. Are you going to blame and, the family now? Yes. Because I've heard athletes say this. When I'm at home, my kids, well, my kids want to play or my family wants oh, no, me I'm to not go going out that and direction. Like, cut the grass. or do, like, You get distracted. No, which, I'm not going in that direction. Okay, but here's the thing. Yeah. I, in some ways, I do get it because I'm not an athlete. But when I do big events at home versus like the Olympics when we're on the road, you're locked in. Right? You have your meal time, you have your sleep time, you have your own hotel room, you get up, you go to the studio. Like, it's just boom, 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 completely scheduled. When I'm at home, 
I'm like, okay, I gotta feed the dogs. I gotta pick up the poop in the backyard. There's mm. a sock lying on the ground. Gotta do the laundry. Suddenly, I'm completely distracted. Andy's not focused. I get it. I get it. I yeah. get it. I get it. Is it that bad in Ottawa? Are these, no. <laughs> are these guys mean like, what's going on over there? That could be some of their issues, some of the players. But I was saying, like, from a tactical standpoint, when Ottawa, the way they play, they're very disciplined and defensive structure, mm -hmm. cool. So when you go on the road, you can just sit back. You have no one to impress. I was saying at home, you have that feeling like mm -hmm. you should bring it to the team that you're playing against. But I don't entertain think that... Entertain your fans? You entertain us. You have the... I was saying you have girlfriend in the stand, fiance, <laughs> wife, mama, whoever it might be, your home boys you have everyone there like bro like turn it up like this is the time and I feel like they start a bit slow because they don't know how to really do that to be the team that is really on the front foot they're more of hey absorb 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 and then we're gonna counter but I think at home there's just different expectations okay but it's speculative I don't really know but when I'm watching them that's how I feel they yeah gotta get them on what's up with at home like what changes what what goes on there because Seven games now, dating back to last year. They have not pulled off a win at home. And pressures, okay, let's talk Sam Salter because we all know that he is uh, the league's first signing for a transfer fee. So internal, he's the first. Um, you know, looked good, obviously, with Halifax. And this mm -hmm. was a guy that was... I wouldn't, I mean, here's the thing. Maybe some people expect him to hit the ground running. We also know that there is oftentimes an adjustment period when you go to a new team, you have a new manager, new teammates, new home. You're just adjusting. You're trying to figure out your life away from the pitch, number one. And then number two, you're trying to figure out maybe new systems. I don't know, whatever it is. But are you maybe still a little bit surprised that it's been this frustrating for him? I am surprised a little bit. But I also, I feel for him in some ways because I think that at Halifax, they played a certain brand of football, and it's totally different for Atletico Ottawa. And I think he's struggling. And if you watch the game, you tune in when he got subbed off in the 60th minute around there, threw the water bottle out of just frustration because it's not working yet. Now, I'll encourage him by saying it's still early and you got to dig deep, and it's always darkest before the dawn. I'm coming with that. Mm, so that's, that's you heavy. like that one, eh? I think that's it's from Batman. Anyways, I digress. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't, watch, I don't watch movies like that. I don't watch Batman. But no, you got to keep digging. But I think with Halifax, they like to combine, and he was on the ball a bit more. And he was also playing on the wing sometimes, and he was able to be in the game and get touches. Now he's an isolated number nine. Like, he is by himself, and his whole team is defending, and they're asking him to They play up a ball to him, and he has to hold it up and be strong and lay off, and there are guys 10, 15 yards away from him. Or they're asking him to run deep in between the lines that really he's not really used to so I think it's it maybe tweaking a little things for him but also maybe he just has to start tweaking his game like get into the danger areas when he can get directly into the box and stop trying to like be so far from the goal start making runs that are a bit more north to south a bit more vertical but is that him making to, the decision or I think I think as a player your manager says how they want to play yeah. but I think for you you got to know hey this is what I do best like what is my x factor like what separates me when I play the game and playing against Sam Salter I would say that him in and around the box he has a chance but he can't be doing stuff like just playing by himself, being isolated, trying to hold up the ball. And I'm looking at some of the runs he's making. They're not really making sense. So it's early. I don't want to just beat up on the boy because I know he. <laughs> it's tough getting subbed off like that or no goals as expectations. But it needs to change. Yeah, and again, I only ask you to, you know, is, is it the player making those decisions or is he playing in, in a system that Gonzalez is telling him to play in? Because I go back to an interview with Drew Becky last year after Wheels called Atletico Ottawa's game a little boring. Then we had Drew Becky on the show and we chuckled about it. Ha, 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 good times. <laughs> but he did say, he came out and did say, sure, we'd love to, you know, maybe move forward a little bit and I'd like to play a little bit more attacking, but you have to trust in your coach and you have to trust in the tactics and the style of play. And he wasn't wrong because, again, the accomplishments of Atletico Ottawa last year and just falling short in the final. But I just remember Drew Becky saying, of course I'd love to play further up the pitch. Of course we'd like to be a little bit more attacking and, and free-flowing, but they had to remain structured and they had to trust in their coach. And they did. So that's why I just ask you, and this is something that only Sam Salter and, and Carlos Gonzalez can answer for us, is what are you telling him to do? How are you telling him to play? Maybe he needs a little bit more freedom. That's Agreed. But I th yeah, I think there is a disconnect. But I also think he has big shoes to fill. I think Brian Wright, 
uh, who just went to York United. York, yeah. He had like he had a big frame. He was able to hold up the ball. He was a handful. He had pace running in behind. Sam Salter is not that guy. And I think they're still uh, Atletico Ottawa are still playing the same way. Like you still have Balu Tabla and Brian Wright just ready to just take on one or two guys, and they don't. So they have to tweak things. I want to uh, let's get through these other games. Uh, so Forge gets the uh, victory against Pacific. But uh, Pacific was given it to Ford. They just withstood the storm. Yeah, they look good. They, con they, they combined. I thought they really turned it on when Manny Aparicio came off the bench. And the game did open up, but he just was the guy that was pulling the strings. Josh Hurd did well. I think they have, we saw Kakuna Mane come in and Adonijah Reed. For me, if Pacific want to be at the top and have success, those two guys that came off the bench, they have to do numbers, whether that be a few assists, a couple goals. But they can't just rely on your boy Easton Ongaro. They have to, hmm. do you, you want to talk about Easton Ongaro? That's just, okay. Okay. Do you? What do you want to say? I mean, well, he scored one goal in the Can Champs. Yeah. Hasn't scored in the CPL. He was a guy, if I can remember correctly, was on your hot seat. He was. Um, and I'm watching the games, Chills, and every time I'm just like, brother, you got to score because Chills put you on the hot seat and you're not scoring, buddy. Mm -mm. You got to score. And Wero Diaz was busting that. <laughs> Wero Diaz was a bad boy last year. Bad boy. Dangerous yeah. guy. So how do you feel about him? Are you, are you worried so far that he hasn't scored in the CPL? Do you feel like the hot seat is getting hotter? But, uh, but, uh, here's the thing, and I said this before. A, yes, because he can score. He's proven he can score. That's why the expectation is there. And then B, he's now on a team that has lost goal scorers mm. so it's immediate that he is he is the next in line this is the expectation <laughs> one more that is your role <laughs> i feel like you're conducting whether it's fair or not uh he can score like here that's the compliment yeah. that's the compliment Easton ongaro can score Easton ongaro is a goal scorer what i've also noticed sometimes with Easton though is he can score in batches mm. so he can go in a stretch where you're thinking my word he is never going to score again and then suddenly he goes on this tear and you're like oh he's in the running for golden boot yeah that's what he does that when is the type of player pours. he is i will say quickly too because i did the whole darkest before dawn whatever <laughs> pressure is a privilege Yes. It is. It means something's expected of you. It means that you should be a guy that be, should be busting net, and you should be a guy that should be a golden boot or top goal scorer for your club. I uh, already mentioned Cavalry still looking for a win. Valor sitting first. Um, you know, as the season goes on, we'll talk about Valor being true contenders here, but I wanted to get into, I think we have some time here to finish off with a game. Uh, we're, juice box is what? Box juice. Exactly. It's box juice. We've got to get they it right know, on the They don't know, but your culture, your culture chose. You know what it is. So you like to drink your box juice on the air once in a while. You have been restricted to just one a day. Um, I've because been cheating a little bit. Your wifey shack. You. Don't say that. She is trying to keep you tight. She is trying to keep <laughs> you healthy. She's trying to keep you alive. Okay? You lay off the sugar. But here's the thing. So we're going to play a little game on whether or not your box juice is half full or half empty on certain topics. Okay? CJ Sapong scored a goal, Toronto FC debut. Uh, CJ Sapong, as the solution to TFC's striker woes, you half full or half empty on that? <sighs> um, half empty, even though he played well? He did. Look, mm. you were at the game. I was at the game. First of all, quickly, I just want to say I was a bit jealous when I saw Adam Jenkins' video because he was panning. He was like, oh, I'm at TFC game. And I saw I you say the invite's like, always there. Invite's always there. I was like, that's my bestie. <laughs> I was like, leave my bestie. I was like, that's true. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think he played a great game. But I want to talk more about Re uh, Richie. Richie. Sorry, Richie Larea. Richie, our boy Richie. Richie? Got to keep him in the summer because that that the way he just takes on a play and was able to play it across the Sapong and tap in, he's just beautiful. I know the money. The mo this is it. what I'm doing. I'm Sing rubbing, it. rubbing the money, 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 money. Does TFC have the room? Money, money, money. They gotta make it because he's he's the most outstanding player. Um, so but you're I'm half say, empty on CJ yeah. Sapong being the solution. The to solution the because you need he needs help. Yeah. Uh, CF Montreal's three game winning streak a sign of things to come. Half full. I like the young boys, Raya, Duke, Schwanier. These guys balled out on Surprised the weekend. by Duke. Hey. On one soccer today, when we have our boy Ollie back on, because we wondered mm -hmm. if it was too much of a price to pay for Montreal, Kamal Miller going the other way, and there was like the highly touted young American midfielder, Bryce Duke. <laughs> and we questioned that. Yeah, we did. He's not looking too shabby. He's not looking too shabby, and he's growing. He's, he's, a, he's a baller, a guy that likes to get on the ball and make things happen. But yeah, these young guys are flying. 
Is your Bucks juice half empty, half full? York United ready to turn a corner after a rough start. Man, the York fans are going to kill me, but I'm going to say half empty. I think they turn a corner when they have their defenders back and healthy. Right now, Martin Nash is still doing a makeshift and putting players in positions where they don't normally play. And if they really want to compete and be at the top of the league or secure a playoff spot, they need to have healthy players back. Vancouver Whitecaps. Defense can propel them among the West's elite. Are you half full or half empty on that? Half empty. Mm. Man, I realize I'm cynical today. I don't know what's going on. Either that or you're just drinking too much juice. <laughs> so it's just half empty. <laughs> uh, they have a good back four, but uh, there's just still so, too many deficiencies I see. with it. When I see them play and when I watch them, I'm just like, I think a CBL team could run this team. I really do. I really do. I, is it York? Mm, I don't know. Could it be your Forge or Pacific? Maybe. But I still think this team is, they have, they have a lot of improvement to do. Uh, so Halifax, Patrice Geyser, this guy, love the personality, love his energy, love the confidence he's instilling in his team, especially a lot of the younger players or players that have come up from League One Ontario, making them believe they belong. And they in many ways have shown it in every single game including Can Champ, they've scored first, mm -hmm. Jordan. Started well. But there's no winning. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no, there's they, no wins. They keep giving up a tying goal. So good news is they're not exactly losing, but they're not exactly winning after scoring first either. So half full, half empty. That wins are just a matter of time for Geysers Halifax. Half full. Half full, it's watching them. Be. Half full. They just need, I think in those moments, a leader, whether that be Nimic, Rampy, just someone in the spine of the team just saying, hey, let's just get to half. This is not about Patrice guys and tactics. This is just about the 11 that are on the pitch at the time saying, look, we've played so well for so long. Let us just get to half, being 1-0 up, and then know in the second half that you trust your uh, attacking players to deal with the game and be 2-0 up. They just have to take care of moments. You can still see they're a young team that are just trying to get together. Mm -hmm. So with time, I feel like they could do it. I know what the standings say, but I'm curious if you think, like, who's going to be able to turn around and have a better season from last year, Valor or Halifax? Can I say both? Are they both making the playoffs? Ooh, for you? don't do that, Trills. Oh, you just said, can I say both? Well, I'm saying both that turned it around, I think, a bit better. But what's what? Because Valor and Halifax were what, fifth and seventh, I think, last season? Because York was sixth. Yeah, so they were. <clears throat> Halifax was not good. I think one of those teams are making playoffs. Okay. I do. Valor? I'm going to say Halifax. Uh, Valor, because for me, they have the glaring injuries right now on the back. So wait a second. Is York dropped out of that fifth oh, playoff spot for that, you? don't do that, Trills. You, you're putting... <laughs> <laughs> First, you don't bring me to the TFC game. Then you say, is your former club making it to the playoffs? Have you... Well, my memory's coming back. It's working for me. You're I'm really like, putting I me on the spot. I remember he picked York over Valor. Look, now I... Halifax is sneaking in there. But you didn't ask me. Maybe that means that Cavs or Pacific or Ottawa I had Ottawa. Yeah. They could be. This is true. I'm going to leave out. you with one more. You got to give me just one answer. We have like 90 seconds left, and it's going to be so hard, okay? When it comes to John Herdman and depth with the Canadian men's team, right? We have two, two tournaments, and it's, he's kind of made it known that maybe the Gold Cup will be where he brings in some younger players, right? Yes. yes. Only one you're allowed to call up. One name? Yeah. Jacob Schaffelberg, who scored his third goal of the season for Nashville. Matthew Schwanier, who has a goal and an assist in Montreal's 2-0 win over Sporting KC, or Marco Bustos, who scored his first goal for Varnamo. Uh, it was in a loss, but he continues to log regular minutes in Sweden's top flight. You can only call in one. Schaffelberg, Matthew Schwanier, Marco Bustos. It's easy. Schaffelberg. Okay. And then I would want to call in Schwanier. No. I'd want to call in <laughs> Dom Zator. And Marco, yo, Marco Bustos could get a run as well. But Schaffelberg's your Schaffelberg first. by far. Okay. Mullet Schaffelberg as well. But I well. think they're also going to need him because already Tejan Buchanan looks like, you know, new team. Alfonso might need a rest. You're going to need guys to score goals up front. Schaffelberg is there. Is there. He should be there. He was on the bubble. Boy can play. This is a fun One Nation. I love it. You liked it? Now I want a juice box. Box <laughs> juice here on I'll One Nation. I'll bring you one for sure. Wills and Wills. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.